Oh yeah, this is pretty freaking awesome. Um, <clears throat> this is awesome. Seattle, Seattle approves minimum wage for Uber and Lyft drivers. And I'm gonna tell you something, that's the smartest thing ever. Um, basically, you see that the headline is the right hailing services will require to pay their drivers at least $16.39 under the new law. Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Let's see here. On yesterday, the Seattle City Council unanimously approved the minimum pay standards for Uber and Lyft drivers. And let me tell you what's cool about that. Because I've been saying this. As a rideshare driver, we're not we shouldn't be competing with buses. If if your city has a local bus when you know I see cabs are charging um you know three dollars for a flag pool and two dollars per mile or something like this, you don't see cabs going out of business. Yeah, they they gotta hustle a little bit, but they're not going out of business. Um so, and, and, and exactly, with the pandemic, it's definitely showed up some, some fault lines, like it says here. Um, I like that. Um, the law passed 9 to 0. <laughs> you know, and, and the law will require drivers to be paid at least 50, at least 56 cents per minute and a dollar thirty three per mile while transporting passengers. Lyft, of course. Um, I'm sure Uber got something to say too. They criticized move, say it will eliminate thousands of jobs. No, you'll probably put more people on the streets. You'll probably make more people quit driving because you guys keep lowering the rates and pushing everybody back out. You'll keep, you'll have more drivers. I would drive for a dollar thirty-three a mile. Actually, I think that's a little bit low. Come on, y'all. Um, Let's see here. Let's read the rest of it. The city's plan is deeply flawed and we will actually destroy jobs for thousands of people as many 4,000 drivers are live alone and drive to drive rideshare right companies out of Seattle. No, you're not. Don't lie. That's stupid. Um, Uber said in a letter to Seattle City Council that is disappointed that Seattle is choosing to, has chose the same damaging policy as New York. I ain't heard New York drivers complaining. Um, no, they ain't got to make no real changes. All they got to do is up the rates back up. Plain and simple. You know, like, <clears throat> for instance, uh, I'm a Chicago land driver. I haven't driven since, you know, obviously since COVID. I'm just not doing it. It's, it's not worth it for um, for the rates. And then even with, with COVID, it's just not worth the risk. Um when I first started driving, like in 2016, it was well over a dollar, and now it's under a dollar. It's like um, 90 cents, and after they take their cut, it's somewhere like 68 cent a mile after they take their cut. You know, who does that? That's ridiculous. We supposed to make good money. Like the first year I dr drove, I, I made like sixty grand or something like that. That's 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 enough to, to, um, you know, sustain you know most households. And that wasn't even driving every day. And, and that's not just Lyft. That's not just Uber. That's Instacart. That's DoorDash. That's Postmates. That's, um, uh. Uh, 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 what's the other food one? Uh, shipped. All of them. They lower their rates because they're greedy. One thing they haven't done, why don't Uber or Lyft say, well, we're going to cut our 25% um, fee that we take. We're going to cut it down to 15 so the drivers make more money. Or 10% so drivers make more money during this pandemic. They not stopping taking their money. We're providing our labor. We're providing the cars. Keeping our cars clean. Washing them. You know, then God forbid they pull the string on like they always do. Oh, the driver said you did this. Oh, you're deactivated. 
Uber still owes me from a promotion they had in December. Um, like 40 bucks. Because they said I was picking up the same person. It's New Year's Eve. People are bar hopping. Yeah. And in this instance, and I emailed them back and forth. And I said to them. I literally said to them. Drop the person off. At, at one bar. The guy walking to the bar. I mean, I pulled off, obviously. And I get like a block and a half, two blocks away. And I get a ping from the same location. When I went back, I didn't really... I, I really wasn't paying attention to the name, per se. So when I went back, it was the same person. But this time, it was two more people. So it was I guess it was a couple people in the bar that he knew. And they decided to go to another bar. Or you get people all the time. Hey, are you going to be in this area? You know? And I'll ask people, well, what time do you think you're coming out? Because... Why not be there? A you know, good business owner is going to be where the crowd's at. So if the people, if it's a group of people that just paid, you know, I've just made like, especially with New Year's Eve when it was, was surging and this, that, and the other, I, I, it was a group of like five or six uh, young kids that they were going to watch one of their um, uh, family members in a band and they were going like 25 minutes, right? It was, it was, it was, I know it was an XL trip and they were going maybe like eh, about 25, 30 minutes. And it paid like 75 bucks or some crap like that. I don't know. I can't remember. But but it was it was a nice little payday for that. Because it was surging and the distance and it was all highway miles. So it was those those tires were spinning the whole entire way. Like I call it, if the tires ain't spinning, I ain't making money. Right? So I stayed out. They were only going to be in there for a couple of hours. So I stayed out in that area instead of coming back to my like home area. And then right around when they said they would come out around, you know, 9, 930 ish. I kind of went and I kind of chilled in front of, you know, the bar. Number one, it was packed. I saw that when I dropped them off. I just didn't know when they, you know, everything was letting out. But they didn't want to stay there the whole night. They were going back home to, you know, finish their celebration. And... Sure enough, Liv hit me with, you're picking up the same people. Yeah, I did pick up the same people. I took them to the club, and I brought them back from the club. That's what happens when you're in a smaller town. Unlike Chicago, I've never doubled back. I've never picked up anybody that I've dropped off. Because the market's bigger. But in Northwest Indiana, where the market is not as big, hell, I had people I would pick up every day. And it wasn't that I got in front of their house. I got their ping at least three to five times a week because they stay near me. So if I'm sitting home with the app on, and I know where they're going and I could have easily made arrangements to do private rides with them. But no, nah, I try to be do the right thing and put it, put it on. But Lyft and Uber, they're greedy and that's the problem. But when you're greedy, it makes us greedy and I could, we can all play that game. It's the drivers who cannot work and the community members unable to compete, uh, complete essential travel. That's the, nah, if you got buses and trains in your city, people can get around. That's why they're cheaper because it's called mass transportation because they that bus can take 30, 40, 50 people or that train or whatever versus a car taking two to three people. So they can they can afford to have a. Uh, they can afford to have uh, 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 charge less, right? <laughs> right, Helen, companies that resisted efforts to classify drivers. I don't necessarily need to be an employee. I, I don't know if I would really like that anyway. Um, critics charge that Uber and Lyft reap financial windfall by treating its drivers as contractors and thus avoiding higher costs, such as paying benefits. Eh, eh, whatever. I don't know about the California. I don't know how I feel about that. I don't know if I want to be an employee, but I do think that, you know, some way, somehow they should create, you know, as independent contractors, you know, it should be some type of insurance. There's too many people out there that don't have insurance. I mean, you got the Obamacare, which Trump's trying to get rid of. But I think it's really necessary. Well, you can get that. Um... 
The city research found out found that drivers made an average of nine dollars and seventy three cent per hour, while ride hailing companies researchers put the number at twenty three twenty five exactly because they own BS. Pay people. Yeah. So what do you guys think about this? I, I, I think is I think it's bogus as hell. And I, I think that this is the right thing to do. And I hope more cities adopt this. Um, because you should you should absolutely have a minimum. And you'll get more people driving. It's just the way it, it just it just makes perfect sense. People stop driving because of the low money and the safety. So you putting your safety at risk because there are some jackasses out here that, that, that pick up rides. There are some people who think that they own your car and will tell you what to do in your own car. And I'm not talking about, hey, turn left or turn right. I'm talking about literally just treat your car like crap and tell us that we work for them. <laughs> anyway, what do you guys think? I think that's a good move, Seattle. I hope other cities follow the lead, too. I uh, found this story on CNET. Uh, it just killed up in my, you know, my Google Alerts type thing for this. Anyway, y'all, talk to you guys later. If the wheels ain't spinning, you ain't making no dollars. Peace.